we have already reviewed the sine of t and cosine of t, the simplest uh, trigonometric functions. So what we want now to do is to understand and uh, analyze together the tan of t. The tan of t is an interesting function. It's a very interesting function, trigonometric function. So it has all the properties of the trigonometric functions, but it also has different properties, especially because it has a denominator. So let's see. What happens with tan of t? Well, tan of t is nothing else than the ratio of y over x. The first thing that we need to remember is that tan of t, it has an interesting uh, domain. What is the domain of tan of t? Well, the tan of t exists when? It exists when the cosine of t is not zero. It's different than zero because we want the denominator to be different than zero. Well, the cosine of t is nothing else than the x-coordinate of the terminal point. So we want the x-coordinate of the terminal point to be different than zero. When the x-coordinate of a terminal point is zero, at two positions on our unit circle, at position pi half and at position three pi half. So at pi half, at three pi half, at 5 pi half, and so on, what happens? The tan is not defined. So it's all, it, uh, the domain of tan is all real numbers. It starts from the negative infinity and it goes to the positive infinity, but is not defined at specific positions that are the multiples, the odd multiples of pi half. So at pi half is not defined. At three pi half is not defined. At negative pi half is not defined because let's remember negative pi half is nothing else than moving clockwise around our circle. So this is the angle negative pi half that is nothing else than the angle that corresponds to 3 pi halves. So, negative pi half. Or uh, the negative 3 pi halves. That is going to be this angle right here. These are the points where uh, the tan, the tangent, is not defined. Okay, good. Now, let me remind you a few things. Do you remember rational uh, uh, equations? What happened with rational equations? Let's, let's remember the simplest rational equation we could have, 1 over x. What was happening with 1 over x? Again, we had something at the denominator. We had a polynomial, a very simple polynomial, at the denominator of the function. And because of that, it was undefined when, when the x was becoming equal to 0, the function itself was undefined. So when the x was 0, something strange was uh, happening to the ration. And what was that? When I had to graph it uh, at the point 0, at this x equals to 0, we had a vertical asymptote. Why? Because basically the rational equation was uh, behaving strangely when it was att attempting to go close to zero. The truth is that the tangent behaves exactly the same way. Not when the x becomes zero, because right here we don't have an x, we have a t. But when the t becomes pi half, 3 pi half, 5 pi half, 7 pi half, and so on. So when the t takes these values, then the tan of t tends to behave really strangely. These values right here give us vertical asymptotes. Vertical asymptotes that are t 
equals to pi half, comma, 3 pi half, and so on. So, if you take the entire Cartesian plane at the points where the function tan of x not defined, that are these points right here, we tend to have vertical asymptotes. And these vertical asymptotes basically divide the entire Cartesian plane into segments where the tangent, the tangent function, repeats itself in exactly the same way. Because let's not forget that tangent, as every other trigonometric function, is a periodic function. Okay, what does this mean for us? <clears throat> this simply means that if we focus ourselves in one of those segments, let's say this one specifically, and we understand how this function behaves right here, then the only thing that we need to do is to repeat the same on all the other segments, here, and here, and here. Perfect. So, we already know that it has vertical asymptotes. So this means that the tangent, the function, is going to uh, uh, be into, uh, uh, to go close to those lines asymptotically without ever reaching them. We don't know if, it, uh, if the function goes to the negative infinity or if it goes to the positive infinity yet. But we can understand that. We can find out this. Before we do that, though, we need to find all the x-intercepts for the tangent. What is an x-intercept? An x-intercept for any function, I want to remind you, that is the point where the function is equal to zero. So, where the tangent of t is equal to zero. But let's not forget that the tangent of t is nothing else than sine of t divided by cosine of t. And this means that the tangent of t will become zero when the numerator right here becomes zero. Okay, perfect. So the only thing that I need to do is to find out when the numerator of the tangent, meaning the sine of t, is zero. So I need to find all these terminal points such that the y coordinate is zero. Let's find them. I want to find all the terminal points where the y coordinate is zero. This is one point, the pi. This is another point, the zero or the 2 pi. So if I move around my circle, the pi, the 2 pi, the 3 pi, the 4 pi, the 5 pi, all the multiples of pi give me tangent equal to 0. What are these? These are the x-intercepts of the tangent. Okay, let's make them green. So, 0, pi, 2 pi, I don't have more here, 3 pi, 4 pi, 5 pi, negative pi, negative 2 pi, all of the multiples of pi are going to be x-intercepts of the tangent. Okay, good. Do we have any more x-intercepts for the tangent? Meaning, is it possible for the tangent to be zero at any other point except of those two? two points of the unit circle, except of this and of this. Well, again, I repeat, the tangent in order to be zero, the sine must be zero. And in order for the sine to be zero, the y-coordinate must be zero. The only points where the y-coordinate becomes zero are these two points on the unit circle. So what does this mean? This means that only the green points that I have denoted right here are the points where the tangent is equal to zero.
So these are the only points where the curve of the tangent will touch the x-axis or the t-axis. Okay, beautiful. Is this enough though? This means that for the specific segment that I'm working with, I have only one point. Uh, definitely it's not enough. Okay, let's find another point then. Let's find more than one point. T and tan of T. When the T is zero, then the sine of t, let's look at the trigonometric circle, when at the t is 0, right here, then the tan of t is 0 because the sine of t is 0. Good. When the t is pi fours, let's look at it, it's right here, then uh, the tan of t becomes <coughs> square root of 2 over 2 divided by square root of 2 over 2. That is 1. This is another point. Pi fourth, comma 1. 0, 0. Pi fourth, comma 1. Good. Let me take the pi over 3. Where is the pi over 3? Well, the pi over 3 is right here, this point. And the tan will be square root of 3 over 2 divided by 1 half. So it's going to be square root of 3. And what happens at pi halves? Well, I already saw that. This is undefined. Okay. Do I need other points? Maybe I want to move the other way on my unit circle. Maybe I want to go to negative way. Okay, let's go to 7 pi force. Remember, 7 pi force is nothing else than negative pi force. What is the point in 7 pi force? Negative pi force. Square root of 2 over 2 the, and squ negative square root of 2 over 2. So this means that when the tan is negative pi force, When the angle is negative by force, then the tan is going to be a negative square root of 2 over 2 over square root of 2 over 2. And this is equal to negative 1. So I have now the pi third comma square root of 3. I also have the negative pi fourth comma negative 1. Let me graph these points on my function, on my Cartesian plane. These are the points that I have. I already graphed the 0, 0. Now I'm going to graph the pi fourths 1, negative pi fourths negative 1. Let's find them. So, let me graph with uh, uh, red. So I want to go pi fourths, here is where the pi fourth is, pi fourths, one is right here, so this is my point, and also negative pi fourths will be right here, negative one, but it's right here, this is negative one, and this is one. So these, this and that, are also points of my curve. And I also find another one. What was it? It was the pi thirds. The pi thirds is square root of 3. And square root of 3 is uh, 1.6, 1.7, something like that. So pi thirds, let's find the pi thirds. Pi thirds is more than pi fourths, but less than pi halves. So pi thirds is going to be somewhere here. And uh, uh, the... The point, uh, we said, is around 1.6, 1.7. So my point should be somewhere here. Okay, beautiful. So, it is clear that on the top side, above the horizontal axis, my um, function tan of t increases. 
And since I know that this is the vertical asymptote and it moves toward that, there is no way that it will go down again. There is no way that the function will go up, up to that point and then go down to vertically, to asymptotically uh, move close to that vertical. Why? Because if it goes up to here, if it goes down, then it needs to cross the horizontal axis again. But as I know, the only x-intercept that the tan has is this. So this means that the shape of my curve is this. And it goes asymptotically to the positive infinity. For the same reason, since it goes through that and since I know that this is a point of my curve, it will continue and will asymptotically come down here to the, <coughs> to the line t equals to negative pi half. So what you see right here is the curve of t, of tan of t, is the tan of t from negative pi half to pi half. And as we said, tan of t is a periodic function, meaning it will repeat itself in exactly the same way in every other segment of our uh, Cartesian plane. So it will move again up like this and down like this. And it will do the same in all the other segments that I that they are separated by the vertical asymptote that I already found. So what you see right here is actually the graph of the tangent. It repeats forever from the negative infinity to the positive infinity. So at this point, it would be a good idea to look a better graph in Desmos so we can observe it better. So let's look at it. It is right here. This is my tangent function. Right here, as you can see, is the point zero zero the main x-intercept that I found in order to identify what my curve is. This point right here is the next x-intercept, pi 0, 2 pi 0, 3 pi 0, 4 pi 0, and so on. The segments that you see that are not very clear here on my graph, because the line is graphed with uh, black, uh, is this line right here that you see right here, and this is the vertical asymptote where my uh, curve, the red curve, moves and tries to um, reach asymptotically to the positive infinity on this side and to the negative infinity on that side. If we look at this function closer, we can see some points. They are not going to be clear because as you can see, Desmos doesn't give us the pi, the radians on the uh, t-axis, on the horizontal axis. Instead, it gives us the numbers. But let's not forget that uh, <clears throat> this is the pi, 3.15, 3.14, and uh, 1.07, that will be right here, will be pi half. And... Uh, Right here, we have the number zero. So around this point, we will have the pi fourths, where we get the numbers in our actual graph. This is what we call the tangent. Now, in the same way that we can uh, work with the, the sine of t and the cosine of t, and we can transform it, in exactly the same way, we can work with a tangent and transform it. It would be an interesting thing to say, for example, how we can uh, create a different function, let's call it z, 
equals to tan of t plus now 1. What exactly happened here? Well, what happened is that the point 0, 0 moved at the point 0, 1. Why? Because I have the midline to be plus 1 for the tangent and I increased, basically I added 1, I shifted the tangent 1 unit up. If I change this to 2, I increase it and I move it up by 2 units. If I change this to negative 3, I move it down by 2 units, by 3 units, and so on. What also would like you to see is what happens if I multiply the tan by 3. What happens is actually the tan is going to uh, change in a very interesting way. It's going to stretch vertically. So nothing different than what every other function does when we multiply it by a number greater than 1. It stretches vertically. But because of the shape of the tangent, we can see that the tangent tends to become more straight. If you increase this number a lot, the tangent tends to become something like a linear function. Is not, of course, never it will. It will never be linear, but it looks like a linear function. So if you if you go very close, you think that is linear. If you go far away, it still shows that there is some curvity. There is some curvature right here to your function. Uh, if you make this a hundred. Even worse, it looks like linear. Again, you need to, to zoom out a lot to see, and for in Desmos it's not easy to see, that there is some, uh, some curve to our function. Okay, so this is again the amplitude, nothing different than what we have seen for all the other functions, all the other trigonometric functions that we observe. Another thing that we want to see, and let me go closer again to my function, is what happens if I multiply by a number. Let's multiply by 2. If we multiply by 2, what I want you to see is that, uh, let me take it out and multiply again. What do you see? What happens right here? Well, what happens right here is that the function, the tangent, um, goes faster to the infinity and to the negative infinity. What actually happens, and you should see it right here, is that before, at the beginning, let me show you the graph that I had right here, the vertical asymptotes were at the pi half and negative pi half and 3 pi half. If I multiply by a k, and the one k that I chose to multiply was 2, then what happens that instead of pi halves, my vertical asymptotes now are going to be at pi fourths. And let's look at it. Do you see that? And let's say uh, x is equal to negative oops, pi fourths. So you see the uh, orange and the green line that they pass through the negative pi force and this passes through the pi force. And it's clear right here that these are the vertical asymptotes for my tangent 2t. So what happened? Same thing that happens with the sine of t and the cosine of t. Nothing changes here. The same thing happens. If the period that we have changes. The period for the tangent, though, was only pi. And why was it pi? Okay, let's view it. From negative pi half to pi half is the only time where the pi, the tangent, 
uh, um, completes an entire unit circle and then it repeats itself. So from negative pi half to pi half, it completes an entire circle and it repeats itself, itself after that. From negative pi half, that is right here, to pi half. So the period for the tangent is pi. From negative pi half to pi half, that's its period. Because don't forget, the period is the time that the function needs to complete an entire circle for itself, not a unit circle. And as you can see, it repeats two i's within two pi. So the period for the tangent is pi. Let's write it down. The initial period for the tangent is pi. Tan of t, the period is pi. So if I take tan of kt, then what I'm going to do is, as I did with the sine and the cosine, I'm going to change the period, and the period will become pi over k. So in the case that uh, the k is 2, as it was in the graph that I show you in Des Desmos, the period will become pi half. But if the period becomes pi half, then this means that the tangent will complete itself within pi half. I have is this. This is how small it is. And if we look now at the actual graph, then this means that the vertical lines will be shifted from here to there. And my function will repeat itself right here. Oops. And the vertical functions will be here and it will repeat itself so it's gonna look like shrinking vertically again let's go back to desmos to observe that so if i change this let's say to 4 by half to 40 then i'm going to change the period of my function into pi fours if i change this to 6 into pi six and so on so it repeats many more times, infinitely many more times, the bigger the k that I consider for my tan. This is the effect of the k. Uh, so we have seen the amplitude that basically stretches the function vertically. We have seen the k that basically it makes the function repeat itself faster and it makes the period smaller. We have seen the midline that uh, uh, moves, shifts the function higher or lower, depending, it shifts it up or down, up or down. The only thing that we haven't seen is the phase and the phase can be anything if I let me consider this to be four, uh, to be uh, the k to be one, so I will change now only the phase here and let's make the phase by fourth. If I make the, the phase by fourth, then my function, <clears throat> let me clean up Desmos here what is going to happen to the function right here is that the function will shift. It will shift uh, horizontally, left or right, depending on the sign that I have here, by as much as the phase turns. Now, since I have minus, it means that it's going to shift to the right, 
and it's going to shift to the right by pi force. Now let's clean up all the other transformations and focus on the um, on the phase only. So what do I have here? I have pi force, uh, and uh, instead of having my point at zero zero as I had it before, I subtract pi four, and now. The entire function, of course, this point, the 0, 0, moved to the right at the pi fourth. So the entire function shifts to the right along with all the repetitions of the functions throughout the domain.